Hey everyone, it's Byron once again, here to testify for Jesus Christ. I am going to talk today about rebellion. I mentioned it once before. Um, here for maybe a week or so, the Lord, the Holy Spirit, something, and I would imagine it's the Holy Spirit, has just been repeating over and over to me, or reinforcing over and over to me, about rebellion. And I wanted to go to a scripture here, and just read, I mentioned it in the last video, uh, Samuel was talking to Saul, and anyway, uh, in the explanation in 1 Samuel 15, 23, it says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. I kind of want to just use that to talk about a few things that's been going on and I feel like kind of has has been reinforcing to me about rebellion. <clears throat> the first thing we realize is that what um, what Samuel mentioned was rejecting the word of the Lord. And I've mentioned so many times how important it is that we renew our mind, do so through the washing of water by the word. Uh, the Holy Spirit does a cleansing action as well. But uh, the Word of God is the Bible, and I always recommend the King James. Uh, but we see in many instances where there's people that are literally in churches and instructing and teaching and stuff like that. Uh, even though they are, uh, you can see by how they're teaching, uh, they have rejected the Word of God. Say, for example, if you're one that uh, hasn't looked at, done a, a thorough look or a thorough study on something, you can go off talking about something, and I probably am guilty of this in times as well. You can go off talking about something, believing you're full right. But if you get the whole Bible, Genesis to Revelation, uh, you're going to have a more uh, broad view of what the Bible is talking about when it comes to even one specific subject. <clears throat> And I think all men are fallible, including myself. I think, you know, we all can make mistakes. But anyway, back to rebellion. Um, what, what has been occurring recently is, and, and this actually goes back further than a week, but it got real intense here in a week. But um, I, I listened to a story of someone talking about a person that, that they worked with and how this person had this bad attitude and everything went wrong and <clears throat> they were frustrated with this and that and, all people around them were noticing. It just so happened uh, that the person ended up losing a job, and they lost the job because of their attitude. But the thing that specifically stuck out in my mind about their attitude wasn't uh, their resistance to do the job or their resistance to necessarily uh, come to work. But the thing that really stuck out was their resistance to authority. Their resistance to, hey, the boss said that I got to do this. I don't like the way he said it. Um, he said, you know, and I think there's a bigger meaning behind that than just um, a person's attitude. There's there's also a cultural background to that. And when I when I say cultural, we we have to understand it here in the United States. We say that we're multicultural, but there's an overall culture, too, in the United States. And we, we get taught that. We, get, um, we learn how to do that through various aspects, and that can include media or the presentation. And I'm going to get down to here talking about um, the, the issue that we have now. We have um, the issue with cops and, and and shooting of black members and that causing big media flare-ups and things like that. Well, just look, hear me out here on telling about this because I think um, we can see that each side of the argument is right in their own eyes. Um, and then we can also see how that's being fueled. Uh, it's being fueled by, let's say, Obama. He's fueling this while saying we've got to try to find a solution. And, and what's, what I believe is ultimately going to happen, and he's going to fuel this thing up right until there's chaos. And then out of chaos, they will bring order. 
And it's going to be an order that nobody likes. Nobody's going to want to go along with that. But if you took the opportunity to go back to uh, Obama's Dallas speech, when he talked about the shooting in Dallas, I actually recorded that myself because I, I, I was interested in that. And it's very interesting if you listen to it. Um, every person that was a hearer of what he said was a winner, meaning he led the police to believe their cause was true and valiant. He let the people that might support the opposing view to believe that their cause was valiant. And I, I, I hesitate to say uh, that it's a, it's, a, it's a racial issue. I, I find it very difficult to say it's a racial issue when it doesn't span specifically racial lines. It's a cultural issue, and that's what I mentioned earlier. And and what is what is happening? And we, I've traced this. I haven't traced this, but I've run into information over time. Um, you can go all the way back to slavery in the United States. Um, you can you can say, well, whites against blacks, but it, it was bigger than that. It was even down to. Um, Within the slaves, the, the slave masters, the people that knew how to deal with them, they would basically divide and conquer among them. Uh, any different type of difference they could find, such as like we got light skin color blacks, we got darker skin colored blacks, they would cause that to happen. Women against men cause that to happen. Families against families, daughters and Anything to conquer or to divide and conquer, that was done. The same thing is happening in our country now. We can say that we know for sure we don't have chains on our hands. But by what we're listening to, um, we are being bound, we are being enslaved by what we're listening to. The Bible says, come out of her, my people. Well, He's meaning come out of all these things around you and basically get into me, Jehovah, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. Read my word. So to conclude the, the Obama thing, um, he portrayed it as if, as if there's plenty of work to be done, but also made everybody feel good. And by making everyone feel good, he also fueled Let's say, for example, if there's people that are pro-brute police force, well, they walked away from it thinking we got to be tougher. Or let's say there's someone that's pro-white supremacy. They walked away from it having heard what they wanted to hear, and they walked away boldly. Let's say if there's someone that's um, pro-black, well, they walked away from the same speech thinking, yeah, so you have, let's say, for example, let's just use black and white. <laughs> you have a white guy that walked away from the speech feeling good, and he's ready to support the white agenda. A black guy is here feeling good. He's ready to support the black agenda. Both are correct, and both came from the same speech. That's how it's being played. So if we are in rebellion to God's word, if we're basically as it says in Jeremiah, uh, each man has his own way and like a horse rushes into battle. Mr. Black guy, Mr. White guy, both of you have your own way of thinking. So you're just going to rush into the battle and bang heads because horses fling themselves right into harm's way. Believe it or not, we're being fueled. We're being encouraged to do that through wonderful speeches that basically promote uh, feel good about both sides but what we completely miss is the point of rebellion against God and God's word and when we have we are in rebellion against God and God's word uh, it is as the sin of witchcraft and you have no favor Samuel was singing a bad news story to Saul um, you have no favor with the Lord. You're on your own. You're going to rush into this battle. Being in rebellion. 
Now, I'm going to give one other example that came to me. This is just last night, fresh off the press. Um, I don't know how, why these things happen other than just through the Holy Spirit. But occasionally I get drawn to old movies. And, man, I've been back through the 60s and 70s. I can see how we were tricked along the way. This one was a 19, I think, 56 movie. Um, and it was about uh, Russia against, not Russia, the USSR against the United States. And it was a um, like a, an espionage type thing. And after the end, right toward the end of the movie, because the, the, the USSR was doing bad things to the United States, right toward the end of the movie, there was a victory. And I felt something, and this is literal, I felt something within me that I had not felt since back in the 80s, 90s. And that was a patriotism. Yeah, I got to do something to serve. I got to do something to help this country. Um, things like that. <clears throat> It was such a big point that I stood around going, wow, that's how they got me. They played me these type movies and made me feel like my cause was just and right. And they, you know, I went into the military. I served for 10 years. I woke my wife up. I said, Leanne, look at here. This is how they're doing it. They're showing us situations where X group is being picked on. And then they're showing us some victories among X group or, you know, saying good things about that. And it just fuels our desire to work for the cause or to go for it. So in essence, what you have going on with the United States right now, and it's probably worldwide. Uh, I think this happened over in um, the French Re Revolution as well. You have people that are just being brought along, pumping them up, pumping them up, pumping them up, never coming to a, a solution. Just keep pumping them up until finally <coughs> you have this battle. And in the battle, more people get killed. And, you know, basically, if you've done any looking into the New World Order agenda, depopulation is a big deal. Read Matthew 24. Depopulation is a big deal. If Jesus Christ did not come to stop what is right here at our doorstep, um, no flesh would be saved. So I'm, I'm saying this rebellion thing. I'm just, you know, hopefully somebody who hasn't understood understands that when we are not in rebellion, we literally are lining up with what God wants us to do. And we're not, I'm not talking about what you think God wants you to do or what somebody tells you God wants you to do. I'm talking about getting in the Word of God, becoming uh, into the image of Christ through the you know, renewing of the Spirit, through the renewing of the mind, uh, the washing of water by the Word. Uh, and then all these other peripheral things, you know, we, we, we get out of them. And then we start watching as a as a bystander going, oh my goodness, you know. Probably a lot more could be said, but that's all I got right now. I could sit here and make something up, but um, kind of see my drift. If you're in rebellion to God, in rebellion to the Word of God, uh, you, you're going to get caught up in these ploys, and this they're just going to take you and go. If you're in compliance with the Word of God right now, you would be doing everything you could to shield yourself from all these inputs that are coming at you, pumping you up, getting you ready for the, I don't know, whatever you guys are planning to do. So That's it. I'll see you later. Goodbye.